Okay, so let's look at number four, and yours may be slightly different than the one that I've got here, but of course, um, they should be worked the same. Um, so Leah is planning for retirement, and she estimates that she'll want to be able to withdraw $1,000 each week for 19 years once she retires. She opens a Roth IRA and finds investments that she expects to return 3.85% interest compounded weekly. All right, so um, let's uh, let's see. If she wants to make a thousand dollars each week. I'm writing this stuff down for 19 years, and her interest rate will be 3.85 percent compounded weekly. Okay, so we're going to go over to a sheet where I've written the formulas that we are going to use. The first question, though, if we go back here, was that. How much will she need to have in her account when she retires in order to meet her goal? Now, since this account um, is going to have stuff coming out of it, we want to use the following formula, the second one right here, as we do the question one. Because um, anytime we're taking money out of account, I always tell students, look for the negative exponent. You're subtracting... You're subtracting money, so we want a negative exponent for that subtraction. Okay, so I'm going to write down this information. She's going to hopefully have a payment of $1,000 each week, which is quite substantial for retirement. I wish my retirement was going to be that big. So $1,000 each week for 19 years. And uh, let's see, at, she's going to invest at 3.85% interest compounded weekly. Okay, so so let's fill into this formula, the future value is what we don't know. Um, this is the amount that she's going to have to have. Um, her payments are going to be 1000 that she is getting every single month. You can think of it as $1,000 coming out of her IRA Roth account. So it's subtracting from that account. All right, the interest rate as a decimal is 0 0.03. Eight, five. And the number of times a year is 52 since we are compounding weekly. And then this will be negative 52 times the 19 years. And that goes over point. 0385 again over 52. Now, one of the things you want to be very careful about is entry into the calculator. So, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do in my calculator is the 1 plus 0 0.0385 divided by 52 raised to this power. Be careful when you use your power button that you put all of this in parentheses. Otherwise, it will it'll raise it to the 52 power and then multiply by 19. So you've got to have that in parentheses if you want to get the right thing. So I'm just doing the 1 plus 0 0.0385 divided by 52 raised to the parentheses, negative 52 times 19 power, close those parentheses, and what you should get out of the parentheses, and you might want to check yourself just to see if you are getting things correctly out of the parentheses, and I am going to take this out quite a few decimal places, because if we don't, we can get into some real differences in our answers and what's in my open math. So that's how far my calculator takes it. 
All right, now I'll go ahead also while I'm at it and put this part in the bottom, 0 0.0385 divided by 52 into the calculator. Again, I won't round things at this point. And I apologize for my slow writing. Writing with my mouth is kind of tedious. Okay, so now on top, Let's go ahead and subtract uh, the 1 minus 0 0.481, blah, blah, blah there. 1 minus 0 0.481316925. So I'm going to have 1,000 times 0 0.518683. Zero seven five over this denominator. And then I'll just go ahead and let the calculator do the rest of this. So um, I can multiply this times 1,000 times the 0.518 blah, 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 divided by the bottom. I get 700,000, um, let me do that again, somewhere I've missed a decimal or something, I got 70,000 which tells me I probably, probably just left off a zero when I divided the bottom. Yeah, there we go. That's essentially what I did. I just put two zeros instead of three. Uh, five, nine, four, five. And probably we can round that off to 59 cents, as of course the extra cents um, in the thousandths and the ten thousandths place really don't make sense in terms of money. All right, so she needs quite a bit of money, $700,558.59. All right, so that's our question one. And um, before we go on, we'll check ourselves there just to make sure that, yep, in fact, that's what she needs. Um, looks like their cents are slightly off there from ours, and that could be just... Uh, a difference in rounding. Um, okay, now, how much will she have to deposit each week for the next 40 years in order to get this balance at retirement? All right, so now um, we're going to use another formula because she's going to start saving money up, and we want to know how much is she going to have to save for the next 40 years uh, each week. So um, let's go back to the sheet there. And this time um, I'll erase my little star because we're going to use this formula to save things up. And what we don't know is the P here. We don't know how much she's going to put in every single week in order to get this amount. But we do know what the F is this time because it is going to be what she's saving up for. She's saving up for this. So we're going to put $700,558.59 and on the left side. We don't know the P, but we know everything else. Her interest rate is 0 0.0385. We know that she's going to compound weekly. So let's just plug in 1 plus R over N. So our R was 0 0.0385, N was 52 times per raised to the NT, so that's 
52 times 19, or actually uh, 40 years. So how long is she saving? Ooh, sorry. Uh, where did I, uh, 40 years, yes, 40 years is our years now, not 19, not longer saving period, minus the 1, all over R over N, so 0 0.0385. over 52. So, of course, notice we just plugged into that first formula there. All right, now, um, I am running out of space on this page. Let me see if it will let me uh, add space. It's kind of weird when it comes to the draw feature. Sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. I'm going to It's not going to another page. Hmm. Okay, so I just had to move it to another page because it was being finicky. Okay, so we're going to work out each piece here. So over here on the right side, I'm going to do the inside of these parentheses raised to this 52 times 40. Again, when you put that part into the calculator, be sure to put that in parentheses. So if I do that, 1 plus 0 0.0385 divided by 52 raised to the parentheses 52 times 40, I'm going to get... 4.66, doesn't look very much like a 6, 1933071 minus 1. And on the bottom, I'll go ahead and divide out that part. 0 0.038, well, 0 0.0385 divided by 52. And of course, we could have cheated and looked back to what it was on that other sheet since we've done this calculation before. Or 0, that is a 0, 0385. All right, now I will put all of this part right here into my calculator. So the 4.6619330711 minus 1 divided by this. Be sure to put this part in parentheses as you do it. So, in other words, I'm just going to get something that's sitting here with my P. Zero 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 seven four zero three eight five, and this is forty nine forty five point nine eight four nine five five, and then our last step we want to divide out this number that's with our P. On both sides, of course, but I'm writing it on this side first. And we will know what she has to deposit each week. That ends up being, I'm going to go ahead and round off to the 
cent here, $141.64 a week. So let's keep in mind that that's a week, every week she's putting in. So she's, she's putting in close to $600 a month. So $141.64. All right, um, so let's go back. Let's see what the last question was. So this one will put in our $141.64, but how much interest will her deposits earn between now and retirement? All right, so um, what we need to do is figure out what she's actually putting in over that 40 years uh, and then we know already what she's earning after that 40 years because that was part of our formula that we did. Uh, we know that she's earning this $700,558.59. So let's just figure up. She is going to be paying um, $141.64 every week. So that's 52 times a year for 40 years. And let's just put that into our calculator and see what that is. So she will have personally put in $294,611.20. All right, so this is this amount right here that we started with as our future value in that uh, formula is the amount that she will have in her account, in her IRA, at the end of those 40 years. So let's take that amount and let's subtract off the amount that she put in, and that will give us the interest that she has actually earned, which is a great deal of interest, as we can see. All right, so if we subtract those, she will have earned $405,947.39 uh, in interest. And hopefully that will help you to get through these um, retirement problems. And realize numbers 11 and 12 are like the second half of what we just did. So um, you only have to do that second formula um, using the information that's here on 11 and 12. And hopefully that will get you through those okay.